Welcome to my film retrospective for 2011. Doing the research for this year, kind of disappointing. I know I'm not the only one who feels this. 2011, not a great year for film. Actually, rather weak. Actually, kind of struggled to find movies to even do in the honorable mentions. So that's why my first one is Thor, a movie that I actually don't think is all that incredible, but has a lot of special meaning to me because it was the last movie I saw in theaters in my hometown of Lincoln, Nebraska. I moved shortly thereafter to Springfield, Missouri. I grew up in Lincoln, saw it with some of my best friends, and it was just kind of a special thing that I got to do. And it is a movie I feel is underappreciated. I think that it does some fun stuff with the kind of cliched, kind of big, important person falls in love with kind of a commoner, and it's like their dynamic, Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hilson, obviously incredible. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, also great. The costume design, the set design. I really like this movie. And in a better year, I don't think it would have made my honorable mention, but it has been fun to kind of talk about it for this year. The other one being The Adventures of Tintin, a movie I think grossly overlooked by Americans because they don't know who Tintin is. Because I think that there are the people that have seen Tintin really love it, and it was really big internationally. It's just Americans who kind of missed out on it. Don't you like Indiana Jones? That is a Spielberg movie. If you like kind of throwback adventure, if, you, if you're interested in animation, animation is absolutely incredible. Check out that movie. My favorite bad movie for this year is Sucker Punch, a movie that I was very excited to see. Saw it in theaters again. A bunch of my best friends we got together thought it was going to be really dope, and it is not really dope. Uh, the action, while I loved at the time, in retrospect, is just kind of a bunch of CGI nonsense. I like the art direction of this movie, and I think the actors are doing the best they can with the material. But in retrospect, uh, Zack Snyder, not a great writer. This was kind of the first like, kind of passion project for him where he had complete creative control. Before this, it was mostly adaptations. This was his first original story. And though, that's the thing though, is while he's not really a great storyteller, he is an interesting storyteller. Uh, the, movie, the stories he tells are kind of unique to his movies and they are still fun to watch and are very much their own thing. And it's a captivating movie, nonetheless. I've never forgotten it, that's for sure. My overlooked recommendation is Warrior, an absolutely incredible film that I missed in 2011. Really wanted to see it, didn't see it for many years for whatever reason. Finally saw it, it absolutely blew me away right away. I've only seen it once, it's probably why it's not my favorite movie of the year, and also I didn't see it at the time, so it's not really good for this retrospective, but I think a lot of people either haven't heard of it or haven't seen it, you gotta check it out two incredible performances by actors who weren't huge at the time but have since and really made names for themselves. Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton, they're really awesome in this and uh, for me personally it really connects because it deals with brotherhood and also the relationship between sons and their fathers and how you know they, they love each other and they, they, there's something inside of them that keeps them together but obviously there's a lot of conflict between their personalities and in past uh, kind of wrongdoings against each other. I really relate with a lot of that having two brothers of my own, and of course, all of our relationship with our father. And, you know, it's, it's a tough movie to watch, and as a man, it, it really gets you in the end when they uh, literally solve their issues through fighting, but also it's so much more than that. I think anyone can relate to this film, but especially, it's very much a movie about masculinity, and um, yeah, the relationship that you have with your father and your brothers, and definitely check it out no matter what. And of course, my favorite movie of 2011 has to be Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This is the fourth movie in the Mission Impossible franchise. It was considered dead before this movie came out. Mission Impossible 3, not really thrilling a lot of people. I weirdly grew up loving the first movie. We owned it on VHS. I watched it all the time. Shouldn't have been. The movie's full of murder. And didn't wasn't really a huge fan of the second and third one. I've come to, to like them for what they are since. But for some reason, had this, this affinity for the first film and was really excited when this movie came out. I did get to see it in theaters and I was excited for it because I wanted to see another Mission Impossible movie and was, at the time, I started to get into directors, Brad Bird, you know, this, this director who's making his, his live action debut and had done Ratatouille and The Incredibles and Iron Giant movies I absolutely loved growing up and loved at the time. I was really excited to see what he could do in action with this franchise that I quite enjoyed. And Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol to this day, I think, Best Mission Impossible movie, even though the next two are also awesome. Um, probably my the best Tom Cruise movie, in my opinion, at least as far as action movies go. And I like that the movie kind of took his real life persona of being a crazy person and used that to the movie's advantage. Insane stunts that, that blend CGI and real stunts that are just so fun to watch. And it's a movie that, yeah, the story doesn't 
really matter that much. It's not that captivating of a movie. It's not really an emotional movie. It's just so much fun to, to, to sit, get some people together, and just, they probably don't know what they're getting into if they haven't heard of it, and just, it pulls you in with its set pieces between them trying to sneak down the hallway and be dead silent. I saw it in the theater, and the theater was dead silent, and it blew me away. And of course, the car chases, and the fight scenes, and, and the fight choreography, and obviously, the climbing on the outside, the Burj Khalifa, that Tom Cruise really did, and I just love this movie to pieces. I've seen it so many times, and cannot recommend it enough if you at all are interested in action films or you like Tom Cruise. And it stuck to me to this day, so what can I say? I'm an action film junkie. So, that's 2011, let's move on to 2012.